Hi everyone, my name is Milo and I'm a grade 10 student. The piece I'm talking about today is called Life on Mars. It was named after one of my dad's favorite songs and stemmed from an assignment called the Heritage Project. When I began Heritage, I was overwhelmed with a slew of ideas, but I really knew from the start that I wanted to create a piece that focused on breaking the cycle of stigmatizing negative emotions. I realized that so many of us are nurtured into not expressing our anger or sadness when these are perfectly reasonable human traits. How can we live freely in our bodies when feeling is somehow decided to be wrong? I started to trace this back because I didn't just wake up one day and feel like I couldn't cry or scream. This toxic state of being has been passed down through generations and feels so unescapable. And at this point in my thought process, I was really looking at myself and thinking, how can I change this? How can I stop the cycle now before it goes too far? And the answer I managed to come up with was self-expression. So I got to making this piece with the goal of communicating my feelings with the audience through an experience. I wanted people to look at the piece and really see me in it. And I also wanted people to see themselves. I wanted people to see the freedom that self-expression can provide. The more pieces of fabric I added, the more I let myself feel. With every knot of fishing line, I breathed a sigh of relief and I thought a lot about anger. I thought about how it had occupied so much room in me for so long. And in some ways, giving that anger a few minutes of my time and really just thinking about its roots helped me move past it. I came to terms with the fact that I hold a lot of resentment towards my family. And the culminating point of this resentment was when my father was admitted into the hospital four years after his cancer diagnosis and I was told he was going to die. The thing is, everyone knew he was going to die for a very long time. Everyone but me. I think I felt betrayed because it was so easy to hide his condition from me. I knew he had cancer, but as a 12 year old, I didn't know what stage four meant. When my father passed, a lot of my anger was directed towards my mom and it made our relationship really rocky. In that moment, if you could have granted me one wish, I would have asked for honesty. I would have asked my dad to let me visit him after operations. I would have asked my mom to cry around me, to show me there's something to be sad about. I would have asked the nurses not to offer me candy. I would have asked everyone to take three minutes and just feel lost, together. The biggest thing that I've learned from doing the heritage assignment is how to move away from blame. It's not my father's fault that he didn't want me to see him in a weakened state. It's not my mother's fault that she didn't want to show me the extent of her own overwhelming sadness. To really understand their behavior, I had to learn more about them. And in learning about my family and my family history, I quickly came to the conclusion that my father was raised in a hypercritical household with too much structure, and my mom was raised with a serious lack of structure that left her maturing much too quickly. Both of these circumstances led to their decisions and inevitably to a really dark part of my life. But I think we can all agree that they didn't have control over those circumstances. Their parents did. And this is where blame gets quite tricky. It's easy to look at your parents and say that their actions are the consequences of their upbringing. But when we talk about grandparents or great grandparents, their experiences feel too far away, like we can't quite reach them. And the truth is, even now, I don't know much about most of my grandparents. But the grandparent with the most obvious impact on my life is my grandfather on my dad's side. My dad was adopted into their family and raised alongside two sisters and a brother. I grew up hearing stories of my grandfather's strictness and anger, and I really just got the impression that he was completely emotionally unavailable. When my father was a teenager, my grandfather was diagnosed with AIDS and died shortly after. Now the story starts to make a lot more sense. He was a, he was a closeted gay man in the 80s who was in a relationship with someone he was unable to fully and openly love. So how would it be fair to blame him? Once again, he's a person whose actions can be traced back to an unfortunate state of society and upbringing. Once I started to realize this, I sort of had a eureka moment, and I immediately felt so relieved. I let go of so much hatred. I couldn't hate someone for being human. I couldn't hate someone who'd gone through so much. All I could do was acknowledge their many, very real struggles, and that was so freeing. Everything started to make sense. Actions have consequences. No matter if they're good or bad, most of the time they're not intended. And there's something so wonderful about knowing that all you can do is try and understand. I think I want to do this art talk so badly because I want to show people what can come out of self-expression. Since I finished Life on Mars, I've not fought nearly as much with my mom. We meet in the bathroom at 1am and do our skincare routines and talk about stupid things. We understand each other. 
and we have patience for each other's mistakes. People often don't do things because they feel like they don't have time or they feel like it's easier to conform. I hope that my story and my self-discovery encourages everyone to sit down and feel and reason and research and maybe you'll call a friend or a family member and talk to them. Tell them about that spider that you saw in your room last night that you think is still there. Ask them about their day and don't settle for it. It was okay. Give yourself two minutes while you walk home and reflect on your own feelings. Let yourself cry or yell into a pillow because these things are natural. We feel, and that is one of our greatest strengths. Thank you.